What is going on, everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we compared between bullus and non-bullus impetigo. Today, it's time to leave the land of Staph aureus and to focus on Staph epidermidis. With that said, now let's get started. First, let me bust a myth that is rampant in the culture. People assume that Staph epidermidis will cause skin infections because it's called epidermidis. Nonsense. The truth is, Staph epidermis, yes, lives on your skin. However, once you get a trauma or a surgery, better with a catheter, IV line, central venous line, shunts, grafts, you name it, the Staph epidermis is gonna leave the skin and enter and invade deep into your skin thanks to the wound or the graft, etc. And before you know it, the staph epidermis is in the blood. We call this bacteremia. And then it can reach target organs, like the heart, like artificial joints. And it will use its slime layer to attach to either one, causing symptoms. I can get endocarditis, I can get failure of the mechanical joint. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch these videos in order. As you know, microbes are bacteria, fungi, viruses, or parasites. And that's why microbiology studies bacteriology, fungology or mycology, virology, and parasitology. When I say Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staph is the genus, epidermidis is the species. Staphylococcus epidermidis is gram-positive coccus. Again, Staph epidermidis is gram-positive coccus, catalase-positive, coagulase-negative, novobiosin-sensitive. This antibiotic can kill Staph epidermidis. And this will help us distinguish between Staph epidermidis, which is sensitive to novobiosin, versus Staph saprophyticus, which is resistant to novobiosin. Do you remember Staph aureus? Yeah. Do you remember its virulence factors? Yeah. One of them was the slime layer, aka the biofilm, which will help it adhere to prosthetic devices like artificial valves, artificial joints, etc. The slime layer or the biofilm, it will help the bacteria adhere. Remember adhesin? Yeah, that's why slime layer contains what? Proteins like adhesins and small peptides and monosaccharides. Because as you know, sugar makes you sticky. And this is how Staph epidermidis adheres to prosthetic devices such as artificial valves, artificial joints, shunts, grafts, catheters, central venous lines, arterial lines, you name it. Staph epidermidis lives on my skin and then thanks to an injury or surgery or an IV line, it will enter into my blood. Can it cause bacteremia? Yes, it can. Can it reach my heart? Yes. Causing bacterial endocarditis or infective endocarditis? Yes. Especially if it's an artificial, prosthetic, mechanical valve or a native, natural valve that has been weakened before. Weakened by what? Rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease or congenital heart disease. Risk factors, prosthetic cardiac valves, pacemakers, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, because staph epidermidis has a slime layer. That's why it is very slimy. And that's why it is paramount to make sure that venous catheters are clean and disinfected. Again, staph epidermidis does not cause skin infection. It can cause infective endocarditis, mechanical valve failure, regardless of the location of the valve, and it can lead to immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis. Please remember glomerulonephritis because when we talk about streptococcus later, we'll also talk about glomerulonephritis. If you want to learn more about nephritic syndrome, watch my playlist called Nephrology and my playlist called five minute review. Oh, by the way, Staph epidermidis is responsible for less than 15% of native valve infective endocarditis. Let's talk about native valve endocarditis causes. 
Staph aureus is the most common, 35%. Viridans group of streptococci, second most common, 25% of cases of native valve endocarditis. This is not artificial, this is native, this is your natural valve. Then staph epidermis, less than 15%. Streptococcus gallolyticus, formerly known as Streptococcus bovis, is about 15%. Enterococci 10%, the gram negative HASIC group is less than 5%. By the way, HASIC is an acronym for five different organisms. And then we have others, including Coxiella, which is a bacteria, Bartonella, which is a bacteria, Candida, and Aspergillus, which are fungi. How do we treat Staphylococcus epidermidis? Very similar to how we treated Staphylococcus aureus, which means if it is sensitive to methicillin, we give Ox, clox, dicloxanef. Why don't we give uh, methicillin? Because it's very toxic to the kidney. It causes interstitial nephritis. So we use methicillin family. Ox, clox, dicloxanef. Oxacillin, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, nafacillin. You can also use cefazolin, which is a first generation cephalosporin. However, these four are penicillins, anti-staphylococcal penicillins, to be more specific. But what if my staph epidermidis is resistant to methicillin? Use vancomycin. What if it's resistant to vancomycin? Use linizolid. Staph epidermidis is not the only coagulase-negative staph that causes infective endocarditis. There is another doofus called Staphylococcus lugdenesis, who name these things? Staphylococcus endocarditis will infect my heart, especially the endocardium, which includes the heart valves, especially if they are artificial prosthetic valves, usually at the site where the artificial valve is sewn by the surgeon to the heart tissue, causing separation of the valve from the suture lines in the heart tissue, leading to failure of the prosthetic valve. Staph epidermidis is gram-positive, catalase-positive, coagulase-negative, and since it's a staph, it's gonna cluster like grapes. It infects prosthetic devices and IV catheters, and it might contaminate blood cultures. Pause and review. Let's review Staph epidermidis from Picmonic. Let's go Staph epidermidis. Here is my epidermis. And here is a staph. It's a cocci. Here is a circular spherical eye. Gram positive. Here is the gram cracker positive angel. Catalase positive. Here is the positive cat. Coagulase negative. Here are negative clogs. Urease positive. Here is the positive U eraser. U rease. Sensitive to novobiosin. Here is the navy bison sensitive. Staph epidermidis is part of my skin flora, which lives on the skin. Please also remember that Staph aureus was part of the normal flora in my nasopharynx. Staph epidermidis can infect prosthetic devices and IV lines. It can also contaminate blood cultures thanks to its adherent biofilm, the polysaccharide slime layer. Staph epidermidis in a nutshell. It is gram positive, catalase positive, coagulase negative, urease positive. Polysaccharide slime layer is the biofilm, helps it adhere to long dwelling catheters, shunts, IV lines, prosthetic devices, etc. It can cause bacteremia, it can contaminate blood cultures, it can lead to subacute bacterial endocarditis, it causes mechanical valve failure and it can cause immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis. How do we diagnose it? Similar to what we did with Staph aureus, please watch video number six. The only difference is that Staph epidermidis is coagulase positive. Therefore, if you run your tube coagulase test, it will turn negative, i.e. no clot formation. How do we treat? If it's sensitive, give ox, clox, dicloxanef, or cefazolin. If it's resistant, give vancomycin. You know what's better than mastering microbiology? Mastering pharmacology. Check out my antibiotics course on my website. It comes with 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, of course, my perfect Schnell's ultimate notebook, and a mind map to help you memorize these doozy antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. I also have an acid-base imbalance course on my website, as well as an autonomic pharmacology course and many others. We got all kinds of courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. 
Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.